Hello everyone. Good afternoon and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> this is attempt number four. Um, I've been taking shots of sky and ground and dog's hind leg and <laughs> everything. So here goes. I hope I've got it right this time because I did have it facing me but all you were seeing was my eyebrow and the sky. So here we go. Let's hope that this works and I can actually see better now it's facing away from me so yes it's a lovely afternoon here the sun's not quite broken through but it's very very close thundery as my mum would put it there's a thunder plump come anyway I thought I would take candy for a walk this afternoon because I was quite busy this morning so my theme for today's video is um, my reason for not going back to the Jehovah's Witnesses and um, yeah, uh, not going back to the Jehovah's Witnesses religion and I hate using that word because it isn't really a religion in my mind anyway but hey ho, an organisation because that's what it is, it's a business um, eight men running the Watchtower organisation, Bible and Track Society, whatever you want to call it. It's just wrong. Oh, hang on. I'm going to leave this here and pick it up on the way back. Come on, Candy Girl. To this gate. So, yeah. Oops. Hang on. 16 years ago, I had the joy of being around when um, the family that I consider, sorry, the friends I consider family, get right way around tonight, um, one of them uh, was on her own and I'd gone down to be a support to her when she was pregnant and I spent the last maybe three weeks of her pregnancy with her and then um, little girl was welcomed into the world and she was the, the youngest child I've ever ever seen the youngest baby I've ever ever seen less than 24 hours old when I met her and um, I had the pleasure of staying with her and her mum for a further two, three weeks Um, yeah, so Amy was welcomed into the world and I came home, I was quite sad to come home really. Um, but anyway, um, so that explains a little bit about who they are and that there's a family, I consider family, and they're not blood, but they were the ones that taught me about Christmas and taught me about birthdays and just went against everything that Jehovah's Witnesses had taught me. You know, the world where people were bad and evil and Satan directed and everything. And this family wasn't and isn't. And I'm delighted that I'm still part of their their little group. <laughs> so yeah, five years ago, um, I got a text about um, the said little girl who was 11 at the time and um, she wasn't well, she was in hospital, they didn't know what was wrong with her and uh, sorry I'm doing an about turn because the lead got stuck, it wouldn't go back in but here we go, um, yeah I got a text message to say she wasn't very well and um, they didn't know what was wrong and then I got a further text message from her blood auntie um, to say, you know, um, she was that they they'd moved her, they'd um, put her into an induced coma, and um, helicopter transported her to the next city to the children's hospital um, that they felt 
were better equipped to uh, treat her. And I went down for a week once she'd been woken up and um, it was her auntie who met me at the train station, took me for a coffee and explained that um, she had two very rare cancers. Um, I just want to get the names right now. Um, peripheral T-cell lymphoma and HLH, which um, is very, very long named um, cancer, but I couldn't pronounce it. I'm not even going to try. Uh, so, yeah, it's HLH. But apparently these two are more common in older people, not in children. And she was the first child in Scotland um, that had both at the same time and she was definitely a, medi a medical miracle um, because when she arrived at the sick kids hospital um, her mum and auntie were told you know to prepare for the worst because they really didn't know if she was going to pull through so she did thankfully and um, from that day forward, always with a smile, and you know, we've just celebrated her 16th birthday. She's three and a bit years well, I'm saying nearly three and a half years now in remission. Yes, she's been left with lifelong illnesses that um, she needs medication for, but you know, she's here and. Um, we're just all so grateful that she's here and she's proved uh, medicine wrong. Um, the professor that was treating her actually said that, you know, he didn't know how she did it, but, you know, she was um, into the medical textbooks and things, the medical journal. Um, and she's just amazing. And I know she's watching this now, so um, I just want to say again that, you know, she is very, very special and very, very loved by everybody who knows her. And um, she just continues to amaze us all and make me humble. Um, every little ache and pain that I have, I think, wow, you know, if she can get through all that still smile never ask why me or be angry she just went through the treatment and yeah she just got on with it her courage and her strength are just boundless and I wish I had a quarter of her um, her ability to just get on with things um, I think uh, certainly her mum and her auntie and all her family gave her so much strength and empowered her, taught her um, so much and I've learned so much from her. Anyway, um, at one stage when I was down to give her mum and auntie support and Try to be there for them. Um, well, the second time I went down, she amazed me. She surprised me um, by walking down the corridor to greet me, which is a vision that I'll never forget. Considering when I left about four weeks before that, she couldn't walk and they were doing exercises and stuff with her, and she was having to learn to walk again. Um, so yeah, it was the last thing I expected and nobody told me that she was going to be walking down the corridor to meet me. So yes, I explained all that so that you would understand um, the next bit. So yes, it was, I think it was the second time we went down. Her mum and I were sitting in the 
ward waiting to go in to see her um, and her mum said you know me and we were talking and um, her and her sister were talking and and how um, they apparently had had a conversation about how if it had been me and my mum in that situation how I wouldn't have stood a chance I wouldn't have been treated and it's something I hadn't thought about so I says well I hadn't thought about it but um, yeah I suppose if my mum went by the Jehovah's Witness rules of no blood transfusions and I think by that point Amy had had about oh, eight or nine, maybe possibly more um, transplants, um, blood transfusion, sorry. And um, it was later on in our treatments that they were looking at uh, cell harvesting, uh, T cell, I think, harvesting. I'm not too sure. Um, but she was, yeah, she'd had several blood transfusions um, at that point that I was talking to her mum so um, I came when I came home I happened to speak to my mum about it and said you know if it if it had been you and me what do you think you would have done I know it's a hard question but what do you think you would have done and she said oh, I would have done exactly what her mum's doing um, and I would have said treat her give her all the blood, give her all the chemo, give her all the radiotherapy, whatever it is that she needs, do it, try it, you know, save her. Um, because if I had been a witness and mum had obeyed the rules, then I wouldn't have been treated. I wouldn't have probably had the chemotherapy and I certainly wouldn't have had blood transfusions because they believe that... Um, that there's bits of the blood that can be removed and bits added and um, and it can't be. I mean, I think of the amount of time I spent arguing with her auntie um, about how, you know, all medical science and all that. And, and yes, things can be done. And she kept saying, no, they can't. You can't substitute blood for blood, especially at the amounts of blood that people need like in um situation that they were in so this week Andy um yeah so that made me research Jehovah's Witnesses and try to find out about a bit more about why they won't give blood and why they won't allow trans um, transplants and that's when I stumbled across a lot of YouTube channels from ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, um, including John Cedars or Lloyd. Um, I can't remember his last name now. I just know him as John Cedars because that's what he was, but he's changed his name uh, on the channel. Um, yeah, I'm sure many of you are probably aware of his channel. Um, and there was also a Simon and Maria channel then. Um, and they did a lot of research and um, put a lot of things up on their channel. Um, and I'm trying to think who else. There was Cass D. Uh, I've quite a few channels actually that I came across. And of course one leads to another and another and another. And the more I dug, the more I found. And the more shocked I was. So it's down to Amy that I'm that I'd decided not to go back to the Jehovah's Witnesses because um because of her and her illness. Um and then um, told my mum and showed her some of the videos and she was um, only half shocked um, because it turned out she said you know she'd always wondered 
about them and uh, my grandmother and uh, an uncle had always said to her, it's a cult, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing, you're, you're being, being brainwashed, you're in a cult. No, 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 we're not, no, no, um, was my mum's response and my dad's. Um, so, yeah, proved them right too, eh? <laughs> yeah, blood transfusions and amendment of the Bible. And um, I can't remember the name of it now, but they have. But most of the hospitals have this in place so that um, Jehovah's Witness can't be persuaded. And when I think of the amount of cases that have gone to court and a judge has ruled that yes, um, transplants and things, blood transfusions have to go ahead in order to save the person's life. So, yeah. Um, I unfortunately, I'm not very good at remembering the verses and things in my Bible, but the witnesses do take out of context a lot of scriptures and uh, they twist the scriptures to suit them and what they want the scripture to mean. My brother, on the other hand, was extremely good um, memory-wise and he always... Uh, he could keep somebody at his door for an hour, which he did many years ago. And um, for every verse they threw at him, he would throw two back uh, and found them, left them rifling through their Bible, paper Bible, uh, a rake of knots to try and prove him wrong or counteract the scripture he'd given. So, yes. Um, another video I'll do about shunning um, and how I'm being shunned even though I'm not a baptised witness um, and uh, yeah hit the notification bell if you want to get notification of the next videos that I put up please subscribe and I hope you've enjoyed the videos if you've any questions do please leave comments um, and I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll say to you for now. Take care, everyone, and see you all soon. Bye.